And I want to uh, introduce another keynote speaker who's going to talk about empowering people. Uh, this one is about trusted process comes from empowered people building trust with open co collaborations uh, by Carsten Wade, who is the principal community architect at Red Hat. Um, a quick uh, a few words about the speaker. Carsten Wade has worked at Red Hat since 2001 and is a 21-year IT industry professional. He worked previously as a Fedora project contributor and general open source iconoclast. He is also a CentOS project board member. As a member of the industry leading community leadership team at Red Hat, he has seen, done, and recovered from many open community mistakes. <laughs> through mistakes, learning, through learning advancement. By teaching and learning with others, we improve the fabric of all open source communities. Thank you, Carsten, for uh, participating and giving this keynote. And it's kind of ironic that you're and not here because you actually live in Santa Cruz and we actually, you know, love to have you here in our community. So, right. And, and, and of course, I'm in Germany just to make things even more ironic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so is my audio coming in okay? Yeah, you're yes. great. You sound great. Oh, good, good. I luckily have my travel microphone and set up stuff to make this work. So um, anyway, thanks for, thanks for joining me and inviting me to join you today. Um, and as Carlos said, um, I've lived in Santa Cruz since, um, well, I was a kid in 1974 to 1978 um, up there on campus, running around um, in the probably a couple of times in the very barn that you're in right now. Um, and, but because of my travel schedules, I'm here in, uh, in Bonn for the next several weeks. Um, so my name is Karsten Wade, um, and my nom de internet or nom de software libre is Quade um, or Quade on Twitter. And uh, I'm a principal community architect, um, and my job is to make big plans and then walk around the job site helping everyone get their things done. Um, let me, I'm going to fire up um, some, well, let's see, let me get this started. And I guess I'll start the, I'll start a presentation in just a moment. So let's take this from here. So um, when I mentor presenters who may, who have uh, uh, mainly given talks to the academic audience, one of my first pieces of advice is to tell them, no one at this tech conference wants to hear, they can look that up. They're all trusting the conference organizers to put qualified people with interesting things to say in front of the audience. And they just want you to get to the interesting stuff. So skip the CV, just say your name and move on. Um, but today I'm gonna to reverse my own advice. And let me go ahead and start this presentation and share the screen here really quick. This one is, how's that? That coming in good? Yes. Great. So. Um, I'm going to reverse my own advice because I think for this audience and because not as many people of you here know me and, you know, beyond the uh, introduction from Carlos, um, just want to give you a little more idea of why I'm standing here asking you to think about, um, to think about some things, future thinking, and marvel on the features of our world. Um, and it's not because of the organization I work for, and it's not just because Red Hat is cool or whatever that I'm here, but it's rather because of how my interest and sense of caring have led me to spend what's now about 20, uh, 19 years, almost 20 years next year. Uh, focused on what I now understand to be the caretaking and stewardship of open uh, open collaboration communities. Um, and I'm stumbling a little bit with my title because words are hard and I don't want to, you know, um, uh, through with sometimes these words just don't, when you're talking about people, when you're working through people, with people, via people, like I don't, you know, people on a road or a tool. So I'm not, you know, it's hard to know exactly what's the right way to say that. Um, but this idea of being able to, to, to building trust, um, uh, through, the, through the ability of through empowering people in, in, in open collaboration is where, um, is where I want to spend some time on today. Um, and um, so, so just flashing back a little bit, I guess, from in the middle 1990s, um, that's when I went from being a, a UCSC just stopped attending student and a fun loving chef at India Joe's to working in IT um, was because I knew enough to fake it until I could make it. Right, um, just like many uh, long-haired, clever enough cis white men of moderate competence in the 1990s in in Silicon Valley, uh, and my skills as a writer and my mind for just kind of figuring out tech got me into IT management, system administration, and being on a consulting team. And it was that latter squad of a few dozen of us from BA Linux Systems, who some of you may remote recall as the our tagline at the time was the most open source experts in per cubicle on the planet, something like that. So, and certainly a lot of people I met, a lot of people who are still uh, friends and connections to this day. Uh, but in 2001, um, all of us, different teams, uh, probably about 150 people were all laid off and, and our consulting team was hired from the street basically by Red Hat. Um, and so then in 2003 and 2004, 
Uh, my job moved over to the role of technical writer, and that's when I started working at the same time as an upstream project uh, in the Fedora project. So I was writing documentation and I was working, leading and, and, uh, and, and managing documentation community for a popular Linux distribution. Um, and I did that for a number of years through the middle 2000s. And at the end of that decade, um, kind of bringing everything together, I, I, I wrote, uh, you know, collaborated with a bunch of people around me to, to set the agenda or the, the outline for it and wrote the original 1.0 version of the community management guide that we call the open source way. And from then until now, I've just been swimming around in these people and principles and processes and, and for how we get things done. And what I'm now recognizing is this as open collaborations that are producing open works. You know, special terms, capital O, open, capital W works, like these things that, that mean something different than just a regular collaboration and a regular thing to get done. And uh, we released the 2.0 version of the open source way in 2021. Uh, we designed and rewritten as an open collaboration with about 18, I think, fellow contributors. Um, and only half, half of them were not from Red Hat, which is a good hallmark of, of, um, of uh, you know, kind of organizational diversity at the very least. Um, and, and, and so and, and, uh, in, in addition to those other roles, I'm no longer a member of the Student CentOS project. I've been uh, focusing on open source ways and, and in particular uh, for Red Hat on the Operate First project, which is a whole other thing. Um, so lots of other stuff with the years. So getting that out of the way. So I just wanted to, to get that around just to, to, to emphasize that I've been spending the last 15 years pondering these questions, um, talking with people and, um, um, and really synthesizing the, the, my present findings and calls to action with audiences like you, these conversations that come back around. And sometimes, um, sometimes I'm bringing something very concrete and well, today something is a bit different. So I wanna invite you all to join me in some pondering and uh, an outline of what I wanna talk about today. Um, and your call to action, I think, will be to contact someone, one of your calls to action, one who cares about community caretaking and stewardship, just have a virtual coffee or a physical coffee tea, other beverage with them and talk about these topics, about why caretaking is at the core, what it means to be a steward and so forth, um, how it means to help people and empower them. Um, so if I had known I was going to follow my friend Demetrius when it came up with this keynote, I would have considered something more dynamic, dynamic to give me an excuse to move around and ride the wave of energy that she sends off. But, um, so I'm, I'm going with the standing presentation mode that you may not be able to see now, um, but I, I also I may have done the Wonder Woman stance a few times before coming off video mute to make sure I was ready to go. Um, but when, but going in today to, to something a bit different um, than what I'm typically known for on stage, because um, more often I'm doing something more concrete with a what and a how and a why information. And as I did a recent talk at Open Source Summit in, in, in Dublin, Ireland, and called Stop Reinventing the Wheel, and I and give a three-step process to use the open source way guidebook to assess and to make an action plan for open source project community. And then I just did three mini assessment demos live in front of the audience using a worksheet and so forth. Whew, lots of work, right? No. <sighs> now today is gonna be more of what I'm thinking about and I would like you all to be thinking about and where it comes to this monumental task of community caretaking and stewardship. And uh, where other keynotes and presentations may be more grounded in what has been getting done, I'm standing here with y'all at the cusp of what has come and it's certainly about the meaning of these questions and some discussions, a sense that um, I have that this is, uh, these are the, some of the things we really need to be talking about, right? So let's dig in today. Um, so trust the process, not the people. That's, a, that's what got my thinking really started on this, this talk. And it, it came from my friend, Ava Black, who tends to feed me things to think deeply about. Um, and he introduced me to this idea, we need to trust the process not the people, right? At the core, it's an antidote to the idea of sort of rooting out the weakest link. <laughs> this makes me shudder to say that. Um, so in free and open source software, we're not asking you to trust one by one each of the humans in your software supply chain. Um, and actually that's that how a supply chain works is by extrapolating the process or the chain from the humans running the process. There's a deliberate separation, right? Whether we build and steward systems that focus on taking care of people who are present in our communities out of a desire to get something done. Most often asked around something they care, uh, most often um, work around something that they care deeply about. Um, so humans who are well cared for in an environment um, highly conducive to learning and innovating are in a natural environment for innovative play and iterating on processes to take ideas into prototypes and then into published or released and, and then circle back around again. Um, and I do want to put a pin in here for something that I'd, I'd love to dive into, but I'm not going to today. Um, but it was a thing that jumped off the stage the first time I, I saw Demetrius present on All in Open Source just a year ago, um, this month actually, actually a year ago out, 
almost exactly a year ago. And I started to think about how can we open up equity, not just you know open it with this special capital O meaning, doing something extra with it, right? And how can we increase a sense of equity as part of caretaking and stewardship, right? If people feel that the project they're working in is equitable, then that's gonna make a, a big difference in their sense of belonging and their desire uh, to do things. And in the end, ultimately they make better processes and we can all trust it and yeah, that's the point, right? Um, and so this is something I'm deeply interested in for anyone who wants to get back to me on that with the pull that pin with me out in the future. Um, so today, so what I've got, got me really sort of to nail down here today, what I wanted to do was offer a, a, a theory. And I don't, you know, this is my way of writing it down. And if anybody wants to pick apart my way of writing theorems, then please go ahead and do so. And, and I do mean theorem in the sense that there's some inference happening here um, that's built upon patterns of reasoning and uh, things that are known in other disciplines and so forth. Um, uh, but the, the specific research may or may not have been done for this. Um, interesting. So, um, so I, and this is, and, and for me, I often use presentations as a way to create or kind of reinforce some wording and messages with something that's really tight with a phrasing, such as like open source is our innovation engine, where it's not about the code or content we get from people, it's all about those ideas with the follow through, right? So innovation engine, that's great. But this is something trying to like get into a whole new area. So um, let me just pause with this and, and read it out loud. Um, by making the theorem of community caretaking, right? By making community caretaking the highest priority of community stewardship, people in and around that community will generate and sustain the highest quality processes in their field of interest. Furthermore, when community caretaking is at the highest in combination with an open collaboration, the collaborating community is in the best position to make and sustain groundbreaking processes and improvements. Two key pieces there, right? It's, it's not specific to software, any domain that's open, but it applies directly to open source software. So it's what we're talking about, right? Caretaking has to be at the center of stewardship. Stewardship is what we do to actually make community successful. The key kind of definition of what community management is, what a community architect does, right? And then combining this general caretaking idea that we would do in any community that we wanted to be healthy and successful, right? with the open collaboration methods, with the open source way, then those communities in the position to really go to the next level. So even more so than before, we have trusted processes by empowering people in these open collaborations. So what is the proof for this theory, right? Um, I think the first thing is that it's, it's a, you know, the idea right now is it's, a, it's observed in practice, right? Um, you know, the stories, of, of how things are done, um, but the the um, in in you know in general, I think that that's the, the the way I tend to think about this is that there's that there's a very similar ways that communities do things, and you tend to see the same patterns coming around again, um, and 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 so it's the uh, the repetition of the patterns and the refinement of the patterns, and then also most recently I began discovering people. Uh, who were doing this community caretaking and stewardship, this community management stuff, were uh, figuring it all out themselves from scratch and literally figuring out the same stuff again. Like it's, it's one of those um, so obvious bow and arrow. Everybody, well, bow and arrow may not have been obvious, but things are being reinvented at the same time, right? Um, and the um, and and then, and then in general, just any time you have a um, any any cycle any uh, social or psychological study that um, emphasizes the um, uh, you know, what, what, what's the benefit of safety and, and security amongst humans and how that, how that makes them, um, um, you know, happier, healthier and, and more, um, more productive, right? I mean, I'm not trying to say that productive is the end result. It's the thing that we're looking around here. I'm trying to counter or antidote this um, concept of uh, weakest link, right? So why are we taking care of the weakest links, right? Um, so the... Um, I, I think um, this is the this is the point where you know just as we're, as we've got this um, we've got this basic theory to kind of to, to chew on a little bit about about the value of of of, of empowering and, and taking care of people and, and putting at the center of these practices that we're doing and why we do them right. Um, it's um it's to, it's really to ground ourselves and remind ourselves that these things you know, that the that these things are, aren't really anything new again right we're. Um, um, and, but, but yet there's something magical in what we're already doing. 
So it's worth it's worth highlighting and paying attention to um, all of those um, all of these different ways that 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 people um, and maybe without even realizing like oh you know you sometimes we 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 think when we're working with a young person maybe right a child or I don't know, somebody you that 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 you're you're helping them see the world and 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 uh, but it's like well, a lot of times I think we just get really caught up in the moment of where we're at and not necessarily as aware of how our particular role in the world is really influencing and empowering people. Um, but just literally bringing somebody a cup of soup when they need it so they can keep doing the thing that they're really interested in doing. You know, these little, the little tasks that things that the people need, the little caretaking, the little um, emotional labors that people need to be taking care of really makes a difference. So, um, and these are the, this is the teaching we do in life where it's really hard that where there's no, you know, there's aren't, there aren't rules to, to, be, to be passed along, right? It's not like gravity where you know, it's a good idea and it's also the law, right? You just, you have to learn it. And the rules around it and how it works on this planet, right? Um, but for many of the studies of learning methods, uh, there's always has to be a way for people to get to some of what, what my friend Mel Chu has dubbed uh, productively lost, right? This idea of being productively lost. Software is something that benefits relatively easily from the reproducing of digital open works. You can mess around with it, right? You can figure things out, you can break it, and you can always go back safe place to be productively lost. So perhaps unsurprisingly, it's extremely easy to, to, um, you know, to, to expand your knowledge and to, to, to do innovations in, in, with open source software, with open technologies, because it's something that you can do, you know, it's a, in a low risk. And the, one of the things that I've been thinking about in particular, are how do we, how can we find ways to create safe, safely, other domains, right, within other fields or within other parts of software, you know, like things that might feel a little more high risk for everybody. Um, because I think this, I think part of this is that it's important I, to me. That it's important that 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 people be aware that that when you're doing, when you're helping other people with the thing that they're doing that they're really passionate or deeply interested in. And when you're doing the things you're deeply interested in, and somebody else is helping you, there's a there's a circularity there. There's, the energy is being applied in a very efficient way within the community, so that people aren't putting their energy into things that they have less care about. They just help them take care of each other, and then their energy into the things they have the most care about. Um, and then there's those of us who, for some reason, those two things align, and we spend a lot of time in this same spot. Um, so and so, where I, I think my kind of wrapping up thoughts on this are, are that we're in that we're, where I see us, and this is my uh, part of that whole why you know why the years matter. What is two? What is twenty years? Well, twenty years in open source. If anybody who's been in, in technology for that long, or in academia, or, or in corporations, or anything, right? You're gonna you're gonna see those cycles, and twenty years happens to be enough time for all of the cycles, including public sector. Federal government can cycle things over a 20 year period. So you really see the arcs of how different types of humanity get involved and, and, and how these ideas have spread across all of these different areas of the world, right? And, and so we seem to be, um, and this isn't just me, but this is talking to other people and what they're saying. So my synthesizing for you is we're in that part of the cycle where reflection and discussion will yield us the best results, right? Um, so that's why I'm bringing this here, here today. In the middle of all the things we have to talk about is to give you some things to reflect and some discussion to yield your best results going forward. We've got the next 10 years we're thinking about here, right? Um, and then, you know, again, let's take each other um, uh, out in, in, in triads are really nice. I personally like, you know, three people. It's a great way to keep a discussion going. When I'm in Santa Cruz, I'd be happy to join anybody. Otherwise, um, you know, do something virtually. Um, and then let's talk about the this fulfilling work of taking care of other people and empowering them to be the best at what they do and to get out there and and and, and to be um be able to to do the most that they can where they are in their lives at all times right um and help and help supporting each other with this kind of emotional labor that we all do for each other if we're being honest right um and um and then just notice for yourself and those around you the, you know these kinds of things like how do we empower individuals and how do we unintentionally disempower them Right. There's all the intentional disempowering. Those are really clear. But the unintentional disempowering. What are the what are the things that organizations and institutions systemically do to empower or disempower people? How can we accentuate the one and root out and remove the other? Right. Um, and then where do we put where and when? This is not a suggestion. This is watch out for this. Right. Be careful of when we put processes or principles before people. Right. It's got to be people first. Um, I watched uh, 
I'd read the book The Martian before, and I watched the movie of it last night. I stayed up a little bit too late. And there was this entire, like the entire planet is behind doing all this work to get this person, one person back off of a stranded planet, right? Like that's where we put people, the principles, right? Before we put money or anything else. Um, so we know all the characters, but ultimately, yeah, right. Um, and then, and then, where do we, where do we over steward? Because stewarding is a lot more. It, it can get lose some of the humanity if we're not paying attention. It's a lot more controlling, right? And, and then, and and consequently, we might under caretake, um, and doing this for others. And when do we do that for ourselves? When we over controlling for ourselves, um, and uh, and having those discussions with ourselves, with our friends, with our therapists. You know, these are all. Good. Um, and um, so that's it. I'm going to leave you with these. Uh, the links are in the footnote, but the, the top one is a, is a, is a, um, it's, it's a short link. It's short link because I can make it today to these slides. Um, I do have a set of slides with the speaker notes on it that's mostly complete. Um, I, I've lived some. And, um, and all, of course, all my coming soon pages, you know, all the things I work on that are related to me that, that, that uh, need, need updating. Um, so, and yes, and I will provide everybody all the things they need. And let me drop out of presentation mode. Um, how far that comes about? And I don't know if we have any time for any questions or if anybody even really has questions or but just all turned everybody into silence. Excellent. Hey. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Thanks a lot for, for, for just yeah. I'm out of time for um, questions. We have about 10 minutes. So um, uh, I'll start with the folks in the audience and then I'll also check with chat or with the chat. Anybody have questions for Karsten? Uh, uh, hi, and say who you are too. I'm Alexey Krabrov. I'm actually at IBM, so we're colleagues. And it's great to meet you. Uh, so I'm very happy Red Hat is a part uh, of IBM now. And I've been a Red Hat user since I bought it at Borders in 1998. CDs and installed it on my Dell computer. So uh, I have a question. So I think the theme is you know, empowering humans to do human things and taking care of them. And I really like your uh, kind of uh, connection to spiritual advisors and people who really listen. So we want to, like we're in a new era of work where, you know, you kind of bring yourself to work and you fuse your aspirations outside work with the work. But obviously we're part of, you know, in these machines of big corporations, right? And so the part of making empowerment is to let, make kind of your work more meaningful. So what's your experience of kind of removing kind of the meaningless part of corporate machinery, right? Which is disempowering people, right? And open sources, it used to be the hobby, right? Like you do it outside, you do it for fun and you remove it, but now it becomes the, the corporate undertaking. What should we do? in an industry to keep the human dimension of open source and remove obstacles to uh, kind of being human when you do this stuff. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because it's, I, 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 I think um, one of the things that's important is we, we need to, we need to be discussing cross disciplinary um, and not because what we're, what we're experiencing is, a, is our dynamics of open knowledge sharing that go back to at least the printing press, right? And, um, and and the there seems to be these cycles where where you have this where the where a, a tool and an innovation comes along and there's all this opening up and it's something all these things happening and everybody's got this capability and then um, the, um, the then then the machinery of the state or something comes along and, get, and gets control of it and and the moment you have a the moment you have a an organization like a state that can write down, or even or any uh, institution that can write down its own history and make that be the way things are and suppress other copies. And like you've turned, you've, you've turned the tool of the, of the free press into something that, su that suppresses freedom. Right. Um, but then it, the tide will turn back around again, because it's, it's the same, the tool is in the hand of humans doing things. So I think that the, so one of the things that's important is for us to look, you know, look to the, the lessons of history and the lessons of psychology and, and, and how, Sociology. I mean, all the other, I'm, you know, uh, science and STS, science and technology and society, like all these different cross disciplinary thinking um, that is um, that is showing us where things, you know, what are the arcs and where things are coming from and where to where to go. Because one, because I think part of this is we become suspicious of something because it 
it's it's arisen, right? There's been this this idea of it was this individuals who are contributing open source, and now it's mostly organizations, people getting paid for it. Um, but but we but the real question is is that unexpected? Is that a bad thing? Is that um, you know is it is it actually the is that actually the arc of the way things are? Um, have have things progressed so that relationships between organizations is the natural um, I'm kind of aging of an, an, of a of a model in this, and that over over time it's gonna it's gonna go like that. Or you know, what are, what are the different things to be looking at? So we're not just being instantly suspicious of and and um, pushing against uh, against things because of, of 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 their nature. And that's just sort of the the overall kind of presence of organizations and institutions, and and people are coming in from them and how they're doing. Um, and then I mean, you've got a second half of that that, that I'm hearing is which is, you know, the the dehumanizing things that organizations do. Um, that is a really um, that's a really interesting one. One thing I've noticed, though, is that there's a way in which open source projects have a staff are beginning to establish. Uh, um, it's a it's a I mean, it's not exactly collective bargaining, but there's something happening that where where there's organizing with open source projects towards um, getting done uh, particular goals in the world. Right. Um, and sometimes it's a political goal or something which which is which may have its own laudability around it. Um, but when it gets to things in particular around issues of equity or inclusion, uh, you know, the, the core humanity of everybody, making everybody feel welcome, um, making everybody actually welcome, um, there is, um, I, sorry, I lost my, I lost the thread of my, at the, at the end of my thought there. Um, but but uh, but I think that there's something going on there that in terms of in terms of a kind of um, meta organizing that's happening across across open source projects towards being able to apply pressure to all the organizations involved in that project, um, because because when when one of the things about open source is, is the uh, is that your reputation and your work within it can go beyond the organization you work for, um, and and giving um, there's some value in building that personal brand or that personal CV, um, not for self. Not for self-aggrandizement um, or self-promotion as much as for trying to establish um, so other people can see like why they should be listening to you or what value you're you know what you're bringing in here and how how everyone's doing you know, that so there's a, there's a lot of this that's going on that's really interesting and i feel like that yeah these are the these are the times where it's where it's time to really push forward what we can think about and what we can do with this um as the um you know, as the desire is here the pressures here and the pushback is is pretty strong, but our capability to push to use open source and open collaborations to to push this envelope and forward and 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 make bring more people in to these open spaces um, is, is you know it's is pretty much here. You know, it's happening right now. So any more questions? I have a one one question, but uh, yep. um, so um, what I find really fascinating, and I kind of you you kind of touched upon that. Uh, in your previous answer um, was this, you know, the culture of companies and their, um, you know, that whole culture that goes around branding, right? So there's a brand and the companies spend a huge amount of money on this brand. And then every, all the innovations and everything the company does is basically under this brand, right? Um, and it actually hides individual contributions, right? And then you have the open source community where individual contributions is everything, right? It's, it's basically, uh, and so you have like this tension between company contributors in open source, you know, where I think there's sort of the sense of, oh, this is what this company, the brand contributed to this open source project, but then they realize that doesn't really work, right? And so do you have some thoughts about this, you know, this? Uh, this tendency of companies anonymizing contributions within the interest of brand versus, um, you know, open source communities where meritocracy is, is, is really the most important thing. Yeah. yeah, interesting. Yeah, because it's, I mean, I think it's, I think it's, um, yeah, the, I think you're, yeah, it's interesting using bringing up meritocracy in particular because where, you know, where we've gone from whatever the, the ideal of meritocracy was to, to it being something that can be gamified. Um, and and hide and can hide all of the um, inequities that are that 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 bring somebody to the table uh, more easily and make it seem as if they've got all the merit to be there, right? So because the um, brand is because brand is a really interesting one. That, that's one of those those um, hmm, 
I feel like the, it's the under-recognized trick in open source software that is, um, that is um, along, with the, along with the software licensing. We, we spend a lot of time talking about software licensing, right? Um, and, we all, but, and we all recognize various open source software brands. I mean, when I say we, I don't mean 99.9992% of the population of the earth. I mean, this little slender of us who understand this stuff. Um, but the, the brands are a wild thing. My, my first original brand coach taught me that a brand is a sponge. It's a thing that is you start, you try to control what it is. You give it some shape of it. It just starts to absorb all the shit and good stuff and everything that happens along the way. And that's how people perceive it. And the brand becomes something that the community owns and, identif and, and controls to some degree as much as you do, even if you own the trademark, right? And so the, so open source projects have essentially, um, I don't want to, I don't know, turn that into a tool to, to give the project an identity and control that is above and beyond the, um, the, 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 the organizational contributors themselves, right? Um, you take, this is, I mean, I think this is true of pretty much any project, whether it's an Apache project or a Kubernetes or an OpenStack or you know, a cloud native, any of those computing foundation projects, any of those. Um, and of course, you've got all of these, you know, the, and even though the trademarks are being controlled by people, the trade, the what gives those trademarks the values are the people who are in there doing the work, right? I mean, it's when we think back originally to like what's the, uh, um, well, a brand is such a controversial term when I think about it historically. But even then, like if a brand, if a brand on a, let's say it's you know on a set of on a pottery, right? The mark on a on a pottery says what house that pottery has come from and everything. We know it's the workers who are there. It's the process. It's the places. Everything. It's the kind of clay they use. But you know if they mistreat the workers, the the bulls won't be any good anymore, right? There's there's an intricate relationship between between those things. And and I think that the open collaborations have made it possible to really show that. So it's the people who are it's the people who are getting the work done and who are in there making who are making the brand do things and giving it its value that they really have carried that along and, and that's part of that evidence is the ability for people to continue to work on an open source project when they move from one company to another essentially not changing any of their outward perspective viewpoint of what they're doing to the world from when they even from as if you've ever if you ever had the experience of changing an employer it's a very you know you have to tear up a whole bunch of your life and replan it over there but not having to do that on your professional side um, it's, you know, but again, this is not the, this is not unique to this field, right? So, you know, it's a chance to look at other, other, other areas and to see like how as, you know, in, in, in science or in other things like how, you know, your ability to carry that citations and other things on from institution to institution is really important. Yeah. Yeah. Don't basically the short answer to that is don't let the organizations and institutions trick you into thinking that they have as much power as they claim they have. <laughs> and, and and even 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 though you might have signed something that says that you're doing work for hire and they own the copyright, if they put that work under an open source license, right? Well, it's all good. I just wanted to add one uh, funny observation. Carlos reminded me of right brands versus individuals. So Red Hat used to have a human under the hat, and then they're branded and they got rid of the human. So only the hat remains. I was always wondering what happened to the guy. Did they fire? Well, it's. You I think you said. It. I think you said it yourself right there. It was the guy, right? It wasn't. It yeah. wasn't an in person. It was a guy. It was a man. It was in fact. In fact, that the person that they had to get a name. His name was Shadow Man, and there was. A, and so there. So were two things that happened. A short answer to this one. There's an. If you want to look it up, there's an entire story on Reddit's website. One of them is that the old logo was horrible to work with from a design perspective. You couldn't shrink it down. You couldn't turn it too tall. It had all kinds of problems, right? So that was one, one reason they went after it. And then in the process, they decided, they, they looked and said, our customer base, not all of them are men who identify with shadowy figures. Maybe we want to be, <laughs> this is an inclusive thought. So yeah, that, it came around. And the third, I think, is the secret, the secret vision of being able to see the, 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 the Tyrannosaurus Rex punching the right, the the uh, Triceratops. Um, if anybody knows how to find that in the old Red Hat logo, um, so once you see it, you'll never not be able to see it again. So I'm glad they took that. Out too. There's a there's a weird cloud shape form in the fit in the old Red Hat logo. Any more questions? Thank you. All right, well, let's give. Great, hey, have a good break. Thank you.
I hope I'm asking. Yay. And I am really bummed that you're in Germany and not here doing this. So uh, yeah, me too. Cool. I'll drink an extra beer for you. It's okay. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> you can always do that for me. That's good. I know, right? Yeah. Better beer. I know, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, actually, it looks like I'll be back in November after after KubeCon. So um, right. okay, so I'll see you all then. We'll see you then, then. But um, okay. I great. I'll, I'll hang on. I'll hang. I'll be hanging here for the next couple of days, and I'll see you in the boss and everything. So thanks, everybody. Yeah, <laughs>